Hello gamers! Um, so this is gonna be kind of a funny start to this channel. And it's not one that I was anticipating having be my basis for my YouTube career, but here we are. I think it's important that we have this conversation though, and I sort of not only set the precedent for what my content is and has been and aims to be, but we sort of warn one another about the perilous pitfalls that is self-ordained cozy safe spaces, especially in online content creation. Um, and know that this phrase isn't really all it's cracked up to be. And if you're worried that this is some like goofy right wing agenda that's made it into your recommended, I can promise you that's not what it is. It's quite the opposite. And I also want to make it like very clear that I am also always learning, always evolving, and I am by no means the perfect example. With that all in mind, let's get this roast to cook in. <clears throat> Okay, so right-wing jokers, they love to complain about the left and their safe spaces. I'm not saying anything new here. Uh, they even go as far as to make memes about it. And they're bad. They fail. <laughs> and we get the laugh because not only are they just the lamest attempts at comedy known to man, but they're also wrong. Finding community online is imperative to marginalize and ostracize people. And I think when you become a content creator, especially when you decide to become a streamer, you are electing yourself to become a community leader. And I don't think that's something that a lot of people realize, but I think it's something that we should start realizing and recognizing and taking seriously. Getting to set your own tone for um, a space that you have created is so rewarding. But it's something to consistently and constantly foster and actively uphold. I think a lot of people get wrapped up in the aesthetics of the content they're putting out there. So the cohesion, the appeal, the cleanliness. Um, and there's no doubt that these things really matter, especially if you want to break through the noise in social media, not to mention the look of your stream or your page or your channel or your content is the first impression, so to speak. These things matter, but the problem is when so-called allies begin to conflate uh, aesthetic with these moral objectives, and that's what's been going on for a while now. I joined Twitch in early 2021, so I can really only speak to my time on the platform, so a lot of what I'm going to be referencing is within that time range, but I am going to be roping in some things prior to that based on um, my friends who have been on the platform longer, as well as just stories and research that I've done. And so when I started on the platform, I played into this cozy gaming meta. Um, I primarily streamed Stardew, Animal Crossing, Cozy Grove, other cute little indies, simulation games, um, things that just fell into like the cozy gaming genre. And and I love these games. I love I love them. <laughs> Um, it helped grow my audience initially. It got me to affiliate, but something was missing. I, I always wanted to play other games that I was more interested, but I was worried that I was going to all of a sudden lose the audience that I had already built up on this sort of like cozy gaming, um, wholesome thing that I was putting out into the world. And, and the thing was, and I'm just being fully honest here, I was seeing these, you know, gorgeous girls, gorgeous, gorgeous girls, I'm <laughs> seeing these gorgeous girls um, gain a lot of traction playing these really cozy games. It's just what was popular. And I saw their numbers go up and up and up and I saw how warm and welcoming and nice they were. And I was like, okay, I'll just do that. But I, I began to realize that that's, it was holding me back. It was a limit I was putting on myself. Um, and it wasn't fully me. And once I started doing what I really wanted, that's when I began to see more people coming into my streams that I consider really great friends, that I consider just incredible members of the community. People, oh my God, my earring. Oh my God, my fucking earring. My Monster Mash ice cream from Friendlies. Shit. But yeah, I, I began to really accept the kind of creator that I was. On the YouTube side of things, I, I have watched YouTube since like 2010. The content I've sought out there, though it's changed over time, is mostly let's plays, commentary, short form comedy skits, video essays. Um, and I mentioned this only because for the past 10 years, I've been watching these content creators and consuming this content by people that I absolutely adored. But time and time again, I was 
disappointed and let down and I've dropped them because I no longer felt comfortable consuming their content, buying their merch, or doing whatever else, specifically because their, their politics and furthermore moral code differed so vastly from mine. If you just recoiled and thought to yourself, but you know, the, the artist should be separate from the art. The art should be separate from the artist. Um, I really hate to break this to you, but this is something that a lot of centrists and liberals and right-wing people alike love to say in order to justify um, some pretty reprehensible uh, consumption. And it's sort of this like badge of deflection when their consumption is questioned. Um, and while there is no ethical consumption under capitalism, classic little line to say, um, this is not an excuse to make blatantly questionable decisions and furthermore harmful decisions when it comes to who and what you surround yourself with. So I just think it's important to be aware of that when you are a consumer and uh, consuming media online, content online. I'm not saying that it's easy at all, it, it feels like betrayal and it hurts when you feel really comfortable in a community and you view content as sort of your, your comfort content and so you begin to get cozy with a, a YouTuber or a streamer or a TikTok creator or just anyone within the online sphere. Um, it hurts, especially on Twitch, where you're getting to know them in real time, and you might even be in a Discord server and you're talking to people in real time. That shit hurts, there's no doubt. Um, but it must be reckoned with. And if you're gonna pursue content creation yourself, which I think is amazing, I just think that it's important to do the work prior to and during your journey as a content creator to ensure that your space is truly safe, especially if you're going to be putting in panels about it, if you're going to be adding commands about it, if you're going to be putting it in the bio of your about page on YouTube, if you're going to be putting it in the bio on TikTok, whatever, I think that's really important. A certain niche of the internet that I've noticed that this work isn't being done or is being flat out ignored is cozy content. Twitch has been around since 2011 and was acquired by Amazon in 2014. By 2015, a year after the Amazon acquisition, Twitch had more than 100 million users per month, and this rapidly grew within the next five years to 465 million active users per month. This meant 1.4 million average concurrent users just before the pandemic broke out globally in March of 2020. I can't do it. I can't do fucking numbers. I can't. I'm so bad at it. Anyway. The pandemic then obviously drove everybody indoors, which gave a lot of people this newfound time to kind of just take up hobbies they weren't able to before and find other avenues of income that didn't rely on going into the office. And obviously this was a privilege, not everyone was afforded this luxury, as we know a lot of people whose labor the past, you know, several decades that were called, you know, unskilled, all of a sudden were essential workers, so, you know, this, this was not everybody by any stretch of the imagination. But my point is, a lot of people who did have this opportunity turned to gaming. From the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020 to the following year, March of 2021, Twitch viewership went up 80%. This translated to Twitch viewers watching 1.8 billion hours compared to 1.1 billion hours the previous year. This also wasn't exclusive to Twitch. Both Facebook Gaming and YouTube saw huge numbers, both in terms of new users and viewers. All of a sudden, a lot more people had the, the time, the energy, and access to resources that enabled them to pursue content creation which was amazing not only were they discovering a love for gaming but some people took that new discovered love for gaming especially cozy games and turned that into a a source of revenue potentially on twitch youtube or facebook people should be allowed to create and explore and get involved in shit that they take an interest in and they should be able to do all of this comfortably there are so many different kinds of video games, and I can only imagine what it was like to pick up a Switch for the first time in 2020 as a first console, or get a gaming PC for the first time, and 
you know, play play a new game for the very first time. Not only play a new game, but play a video game for the very first time. I am a lifelong gamer. I've been playing games as far back as I can remember. Some of my earliest memories include sitting on my my parents' bed, watching them play Ogre Battle 64 Personal Lordly Caliber for the Nintendo 64, and just watching them play that for hours. And then I would sneak into the little basket of cartridges and I would pick up Donkey Kong 64 because it was a yellow cartridge and I thought that was so sick. So I would play that and I think that that was my first game just because of a yellow cartridge. Falling in love with a game for the first time is a really magical special experience and I always love hearing people's stories about the game that got them into gaming. I think that's just a really cool thing. Nowadays, you really have endless options as to what kind of game you're looking for and what kind of experience you are looking to have. If that's exclusively farming simulators, Animal Crossing, you know, cozy sort of pastel story-based games, and that's amazing. Some of my favorite games are like that, like the Animal Crossing series, Breath of the Wild, Stardew Valley, Undertale. I'm really into Pokemon Arceus. I think that's a great game. I am very anti-gatekeeping, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm gate relinquishing. I'm, I'm gate giving. Gates are open. And you still see cishet men coming down on anyone of a marginalized gender for liking anything other than first person shooter games or classic Pokemon. Um, and this is amplified, especially when you're putting yourself out there on a platform like Twitch. I think a common misconception about Twitch is that the platform is exclusively allowed angry white men cracked at Fortnite or Apex. I don't know. And while that does exist, and remains popular still, sadly, some might even argue more popular. With the popularization of indie games and more representation than ever in online culture, I think some really amazing alternatives have popped up in the past couple years. It's crazy because being a casual used to be this insult. But we've really normalized this style of play, and I think that's awesome. I think that's amazing. That's a huge stride in gaming culture as a whole. There's a whole genre of video game now that puts its laurels on being cozy and casual, and I think that's something that 10 years ago was really frowned upon. Oh my god, my earring again! By analyzing the rapid development and growth of abundant online entertainment, congruently with this rise of wholesome, cozy, casual gaming, we begin to see the foundation for our issues. Cozy gaming has been having its moment in the sun since the release of Animal Crossing New Horizons in March of 2020. Its release was highly anticipated not just for longtime Animal Crossing stands, but for Nintendo fans in general just jonesing for a big title. And the fact that it aligned with this exact moment in time where everyone had to be inside, it created this perfect storm of cute coziness that made gamers out of a whole new demographic non-gamers with nothing but time on their hands and no excuses anymore not to play. And I mean, I, I think that New Horizons is an amazing intro into gaming, even though it's not my personal favorite Animal Crossing, and in my opinion, it's not the best one either, especially um, at its initial release. It does, however, full transparency, and it has the most hours I have ever put into any video game. Um, and I think, I think it's because of its place in the culture. I mean, when it was released, there was this buzz. There was this huge hype around this game. It was a really fun way to connect with people when connecting was not an option physically. And it was such an escape and a release when there was just constant reminders about death and disease and whether it was affecting you personally or you were just reading about it on Twitter and Facebook and every social media there was every single day, every moment of the day, it was just... With almost 40 million copies of this game being sold, it makes Animal Crossing New Horizons the second biggest Switch title overall. And this is super duper impressive because it's the only game within the top four that wasn't a launch title. And if you combine every copy sold of all of the previous Animal Crossing games, it still wouldn't amount to the number of titles sold of New Horizons. So that's really wild. <laughs> All of a sudden, you had millions more, tens of millions more people wondering, like, 
what games are going to produce the same amount of serotonin. So a spotlight began to get shown on Concerned Apes Stardew Valley, Minecraft, Terraria, Story of Seasons, Spiritfarer, Undertale, uh, Paper Mario, Cozy Grove, Pokemon, um, and just other miscellaneous simulators. The Animal Crossing series did not kickstart Cozy Gaming, by the way. The first Animal Crossing game was released in 2001 for the Nintendo GameCube, but games like Harvest Moon for the Nintendo 64 have been around forever. I don't know if that's the definitive start to what we would call Cozy Gaming, but that one comes to mind right away. So I think ultimately, Animal Crossing New Horizons was the right game at the right time to become the face of the Cozy Gaming movement. A study from Project Quartz in 2017, so three years actually before the release of Animal Crossing New Horizons, defines cozy games as such. Coziness is an ingredient that can be applied to a wide variety of both casual and core genres. Coziness can help your game appeal to broader audiences. Coziness helps retention by giving players control over pacing while still maintaining engagement during periods of rest. And coziness is a subversely humanizing design practice in a society built on monetizing base animal needs. So essentially, they define coziness as having three main tenets. Coziness itself refers to how strongly a game can evoke the fantasy of safety, abundance, and softness. A cozy game has an absence of danger and risk. In a cozy game, nothing is high risk and there's no impending loss or threat. Familiarity, reliability, and one's ability to be vulnerable and expressive without negative ramification all augment the feeling of safety. To maximize safety, activities should be voluntary and opt-in so that players never feel the threat of coercion. And I feel like this is why in-game clocks and sort of time-based events are sometimes stressors that negate this feeling. Abundance. A cozy game has a sense of abundance. Lower level Maslow needs, food and shelter, are met or being met, providing space to work on higher needs such as deeper relationships, appreciation of beauty, self-actualization, nurturing and belonging. Nothing is lacking, pressing, or imminent. Softness. Cozy games use strong aesthetic signals like lighting, sound cues, curated indoor and outdoor spaces that tell players they are in a low stress environment full of abundance and safety. So our two prior tenants. And so these games are marketed towards women, casual gamers, non-gamers, and people in general that just fit outside of what your boomer uncle thinks that gaming is. I think it's really important to mention here that these moments of respite in gaming are really important when so much of the culture is sort of centered around getting good and what your average kda and the, f the fact that we've evolved to this point where it's much more normalized for everybody to play whatever whatever game they want is amazing but let's face it we know who these games are made for and we know who these game developers are trying to appeal to and the potential of cozy influencers playing their game for a wider audience. This leads me to my main point. Since safety is a main tenant and so pervasive in cozy games, the same could be said for influencers making cozy content. A lot of folks who spend their time making cozy content and championing their space as safe, you know, just because they are playing a game that opposes popular male-dominated video games like Smash or Apex or Fortnite, just to name a few off the top of my head, end up virtue signaling. You know, because they belong to a marginalized gender or sexuality, etc. Um, and they're being kind and they're projecting good vibes while they play The Sims that this somehow absolves them of being a harmful force. This is untrue <laughs> and it's, it's commodified. This culture has commodified what it means to be cozy. And again, most of what I'm referring to is on Twitch, but I do think it applies to YouTube as well. It is not just plant PNGs, coffee mug gifts, safe space assets, and raising money for animals. What these creators do is calculated. They put particular emphasis on the aesthetics of their streams, sort of minimalist design, muted colors, delicate emoticons, cute layouts, and then a big fat no politics rule right next to a panel or a command about being a safe space. A lot of people's reasoning for this that I found is that they want their stream or their content or the videos to be an escape, that they want to just ignore everything for a while and live inside their little video game world while people send them copious amounts of money for being such a positive force. This is all fine and good when you're playing video games on your own to just like de-stress, but when you are a content creator with a platform 
and you are creating cozy content and you claim that you are a safe space for all, you cannot possibly, in good faith, allow bigots in and expect good people to not walk out. When you try to appeal to everybody in this frantic play at mass visibility, you will end up appealing to nobody. And furthermore, you're going to isolate people who have been led to believe that your space was a safe place for them to be their authentic self, free of like judgment and fear and ridicule or attacks on their person. Implementing boundaries is important, but it is incredibly privileged to just go live and disconnect from reality. And I understand being conflict averse, but this isn't about you. This is about actively upholding the creed that you have set in place for your space and being intentional, inclusive, and intersectional. Because otherwise, your little woo-woo, cozy, cozy corner of the internet, safe space, safety net is hollow. We've diluted coziness and safety to this disingenuous thing. I remember in college, uh, my one roommate decided that she was going to put up a trash chart without talking to anybody about it. There were I was living with four people. She talked to one other person about it, and then me and my really good friend were kind of left in the dark about it. And she put stickers and glitter all over the trash chart, right? And when I rejected the trash chart, because we were all adults, I thought it was stupid and I wasn't consulted about it, and I continued to take the trash out without signing the thing, she got angry at me. And she used the fact that she made it pretty and cute as, as a deflection. What I say to the fact that she never consulted me or my friend about it, and we didn't need it because we were adults and it was getting done. Some of your streams and videos are a strawberry shortcake stickered up in glittered trash chart. That's it, that's all. There's this common attitude amongst cozy streamers that taking the all in all are welcome here is like a very deliberate and denotative activity. And I think this is done deliberately. Not only is this to maximize their audience, no matter how much they would deny this, but they tend to share this belief that the person who hates you can peacefully share community with you. And furthermore, that this belief is morally superior because then no one is excluded. This is naive at best and willfully ignorant at worst. Referencing what we began this segment with, it comes down to a creator's intention. And no matter how good your vibes are, no matter how pastel core your ass outs are, no matter how cute your layout, it cannot stand in for holding a truly safe, cozy space space. And, and listen, I don't want to sit here and pretend like all creators should know everything. There should be room for learning and evolution and growth. I fully believe that. I think there's an expectation that by being on the internet publicly with any size platform, it means that you need to speak on every single issue whenever it comes up. And that's not true. That's impossible. But there are moral imperatives that should be upheld, especially if you're going to be producing cozy content that promotes a safe space. And you should be actively listening and you should be open to evolving. At the end of the day, it's your content and you get to do what you want with it. And I think that curating a cozy space is a worthy pursuit. But in the words of an amazing content creator, you should all be following Soy Milk, liberated space over a cozy space. Because some people believe that staying out of politics and remaining silent on issues that people in your community or active viewers face on a day to day is safe. It is not. Another alternative to this sort of content is mindful gaming as described by Lilis Fox on YouTube and Twitch. They also do a lot of cozy recommendations, but their intention is always clear. And I never have to question if they're being disingenuous. I watch plenty of streamers who self-describe their content as cozy and I feel comfortable doing so because I've seen them do the work and I can truly relax there. And I don't think you need to use an alternative word here if this is what suits you best. I really don't. And I think that you can play games that fall under the wholesome, cozy game umbrella and not be a cozy creator. And I actually think that you can even play typically like hardcore games and still be cozy and warm and comfy. I just think that we all need to be honest and open with ourselves with the energy that we're putting out there on the internet.
I hope everyone can find their niche, and I hope that this video was helpful in some way. There's been a lot of discourse about the safety of our spaces on the internet lately, and if you are a community leader, this should be on the forefront of your mind. Intersectionality, inclusivity, and being actionable. Not everyone is built to be an activist. That's fine. You don't have to be. But what you can't do is self-identify as this sort of cozy mecca of safety when you're willingly allowing oppressors to commune with marginalized people. That doesn't work. It is, it's counterintuitive and it compromises the very basis of what you claim to uphold. So be cozy or be something else. This toxic positivity, performative amalgamation where we're commodifying a great, very anti-gatekeeping movement in gaming isn't going to get us anywhere if we're going to be behaving like the most toxic of the boomer gamer meta behind closed doors. So here is a list if you enjoy cozy content um, of friends who I think are putting out consistently great content that can fall into this category. Congratulations, you have made it to the end of the video and I am so proud of you. As a special little treat, you get to play Find the Funnel Cake. Leave a comment down below when you find it, but do not reveal it to anybody, okay? Thank you for watching and liking this video. I hope you liked it because I did. Take care of yourself and come again real soon.